I nearly didn't make this video because it kind of felt hipster, maybe a bit cliche, but I've been doing a morning routine since 2016 and I really love it. So I wanted to share it with you. I think I originally started a morning routine back then because at the time I was feeling a bit all over the place and I was also feeling a bit sad. So I figured by adding some structure into my morning, it might improve my general well-being. And it seemed to work well, so six years on, I've kept it up. Over the years, the routine has changed here and there, but the basics have remained the same. And from what I've found is that by having a routine in the morning, my day starts with momentum, and then that allows me to stay focused and be productive. I've been getting up at 5 a.m. since 2016, and I've always been an early bird and I find it easy to get out of bed early, but it does mean that I have to be in bed by 8.30 and asleep by 9 p.m., which is a little bit antisocial sometimes. I wake up with the alarm on my watch and before having this watch, I used a regular alarm clock. I don't use the alarm on my phone because that stays downstairs. And this is a good time to say that during the morning routine, I don't use my phone at all. I love getting up early because the world is quiet and there's few distractions and it means I can unwind into the day and do the following things. Getting out of bed, I head downstairs and make a cup of turbo tea and it's a recipe I made up myself based on a variation of Tim Ferriss's titanium tea and it includes green tea, black tea, turmeric powder and fresh ginger slices. It's a refreshing drink to wake up to because I don't like coffee and I use loose tea leaves and this tea straining thing because I like the ritual, plus I think it tastes better. And all of the things in this video, I'd like to make a separate video about just so I can go into some more detail. So keep an eye out for those on my channel. Oh, and I also do this, but I don't suppose that's of much value to you. He's a clever boy. Whilst the tea brews, I drink half a pint of water, refill the glass, then make the tea, grab the two drinks and head upstairs for the next steps. And this part is my absolute favourite and it comes in two sections, the gratitude journal and the morning pages. When doing these, I listen to my meditation playlist on Spotify, which I've listened to for years. And this is on an old phone that just has some really basic health apps on and it sets the scene for the things that follow. My gratitude journal takes around five minutes and I write, three things I'm grateful for, three things that would make my day great, and three affirmations. I totally stole this from the routine that Tim Ferriss does, and I've been doing it for six years, and I love it. If you're limited on time in the morning, then I think the gratitude journal is fantastic because it's quick and easy, and it powers up the brain in a really positive way, ready to start your day. And you can write it while sipping on your morning cuppa. I use an A5 hardback notebook, just something from the local shop. This one cost about three pound and I buy something that I like the look of. Next, I grab my morning pages. And this is something that I've been doing since 2020 when I completed the Artist's Way course. And I'll link a video about that up here. Morning pages is a writing practice where you just write what comes into your head. Let the unfiltered thoughts come from your brain, through the pen and onto the paper and anything goes. Good things, bad things, revelations, upsets, ambitions, annoyances. In fact, the negative stuff and all the frustrations, that's the good bit because it's kind of like therapy. You name it, it goes on the page. Morning pages are incredible and I'm going to say they've been life-changing for me and I don't want to imagine my life without them and I do plan on making a separate video about them, giving much more detail about it. Strictly speaking, morning pages should be three pages of writing, but I just go with the flow. Sometimes it's easy to fill three pages, other times it's just half a page or a few lines. I don't put pressure on it, I just usually write what I want and stop when I feel like it, and that usually is around 30 minutes. And the book I use is a basic A4 lined notebook, nothing fancy, and I buy these in bulk online. So at this stage, I'd like to address the fact that I'm very fortunate to have the time and the environment to be able to do this reasonably extensive morning routine. I don't have children, I just have Charlie, and I don't have a husband, 
and I don't really have very many commitments or responsibilities, so the morning is mine to do what I want with. It feels luxurious to be able to do all of this, and if you don't have the same circumstances as me, then I'm hoping that you might be able to take a few things from this video and it might help enhance your day. With my head in a positive place after the journaling and after clearing all of the junk with the morning pages, I grab my work notebook and start thinking about the day ahead, writing the things that I need or would like to do with that day. And like before, I use a basic A4 lined notebook. On the left hand side, I throw all of the plans and ideas down. And in fact, I've usually been writing stuff down in between journaling and morning pages as I think of them. Then on the right, I restructure that list into a more organized one with, and this is the important part, timestamps. I only just started using timestamps about a year ago because I found that my list of things to do was way too ambitious and I would just give myself so many things to do in a day and then not get them done. And at the end of each day, I was just disappointed. Now, by writing the tasks next to a time in the day, I can see if I've got enough time to do everything. And over the months, my time planning has improved so much. I'm able to plan my day better and I can usually get everything done without rushing. That's not always the case, but it is most of the time. So far, all of that stuff has taken around 45 minutes, which I think is pretty good. I'm hydrated. I've done my kind of therapy type thing with my morning pages. I've planned my day, and now I let that all sink in with 10 minutes of meditation, breath work, or visualization. I pick from those three what feels right for me on that day and what I'm gonna get the most benefit from. If my brain is really busy, I'll meditate and that's an attempt to help clear and calm it. If I want some focus and feel that I haven't been breathing consciously, then I'll do the four, seven, eight breath or some box breathing. And if I want to achieve something big or need to stay disciplined for the day, then I'll visualize either the thing that I want to achieve or I'll imagine myself having a really great day, staying focused with few distractions. And I find that by doing this practice at the end of all of the other things, it rounds it all up, allowing my brain to process everything. By this time, about an hour has passed and it's a really nice way for me to ease into the day, especially as I get quite a lot of my best ideas in the morning. So it just gives me some time to sit with them and process them. And after all that, it's time to get my body moving. I exercise five to six mornings a week and it's something that I've done for many years and can't imagine not doing it. It gets my feel good hormones flowing, takes care of my body and mind, and it gets my exercise done early so then I haven't got that nagging feeling all day to work out. I work out in a fasted state for about 30 to 45 minutes and it consists of either body weight exercise and then running, which includes five kilometer runs, interval trainings, and long slow runs. I'm planning for my next video to be details on my weekly workout schedule. So once I've made that, I'll add that up here. And then finally, on a Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, I have an ice bath in my wheelie bin for two to four minutes. And this keeps me topped up with all my cold exposure and all the related benefits. And I never want to get in this bin, but I just have to get on with it because it always makes me feel so good after. I'm always looking for excuses not to get in that bin and I find if I miss a day, it's just a downward spiral and then I just keep missing more days. And it's easier to just get in the bin for two minutes than to deal with all of the negative chit chat that goes on in my head otherwise. Two minutes of this helps warm my body up and then I go inside and then I'm prepped for my day. I'm feeling good. I have a shower, I get ready and I'm at work for 8 a.m. Works at home, so there's no commute. And my first meal is lunch at 12 p.m. All in all, this routine takes around two hours and I'll sometimes do it at the weekend, but I don't put pressure on it. When I'm away from home, I take my notebooks with me and I still do the routine and I find that it settles me into my new environment and even a new time zone. I'll admit, now I've laid out all of these things in a kind of bullet point form, it can feel a bit maybe extravagant, but my mornings are my time to relax, whereas others might use the evening to relax. And in my evenings, I tend to read, do research, or online courses. No quiero hacerlo así.
So my mornings are really precious to me and the reality is that by doing them in this way it really gets the best out of me and the best out of my day. If you have any questions about my morning routine or if you want to share yours or share some tips on how you start your morning healthy and cheerful then please let me know in the comments box. I know that plenty of people go down there searching for motivation and inspiration. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you at the next one. Hmm. That was a nice kiss. I didn't think we were going to get that shot. Oh, there we go, squiggly worm.